This is Dr. Marcos Reyes with Inside the Eye. It's been quite some time since my last posting, and I apologize for that. We had some family health matters to take care of, but we're back at it now. Today I'd like to describe placing a stent inside the human eye. I hope you enjoy the video, and as always, please subscribe. If you haven't seen my previous video called Glaucoma Nuts and Bolts, please press the link above and watch that first. We're going to skip through a lot of the information I covered in that video. In brief, glaucoma is a damaged optic nerve that is generally due to higher than normal eye pressure inside the eye. This higher than normal eye pressure is due to an imbalance between the production and the drainage of fluid within the front part of the eye, which is then transmitted to the back part of the eye and that squeezes on the optic nerve. This fluid is called aqueous fluid and it is made in a location in the eye called the ciliary body and drained in a location called the angle. The angle is a generic term for a few important structures. The first is the trabecular meshwork. It is a porous structure through which the fluid must pass before it enters the canal. The canal is called Schlund's Canal, named after an Austrian anatomist. From this canal, the fluid then passes through collector channels into the regular veins that are in the whites of our eyes. And these veins then connect to larger veins, which return all the blood to our heart, and that circulates throughout the rest of our body. It is these structures, the trabecular meshwork, Schlem's canal and the collector channels that control the pressure inside of our eyes and if these things are not functioning properly then consequently the pressure inside of our eyes rises and it squeezes the optic nerve to death either slowly if the pressure is only mild or moderately high or quickly if it is very high. This damage to our optic nerve causes a loss of vision in general, the loss of vision is in the periphery. We don't even notice it at first, and then it slowly creeps in from the bottom or from the top, and then a little more central, and then before we know it, we're having trouble with the center of our vision, and then it may be gone. Unfortunately, many people present to our clinic already having lost peripheral vision, and if not controlled, 15% of these people will go blind. And it is extremely distressing and sad to me because it's a very controllable disease. If patients are compliant and they show up for visits and we intervene in a timely manner, the vast majority of people will not lose any additional vision. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's focus on how to control things. In my previous video titled Glaucoma Treatments, I went over many different treatments. Today I'm going to focus specifically on how we augment the natural drainage system and make things flow much better. Now remember the three important structures of the drainage angle of the eye. The first is the trabecular meshwork, then Schlem's canal, and then collector channels. Now let's switch from a schematic view to an inside the eye view. In this video I have a lens over the eye, over the cornea, specifically called a gonio prism, and it allows me to see the angle from an internal view. The first step to augmenting or increasing the drainage capacity of the human eye is to make an opening in the trabecular meshwork. This opening is called a goniotomy. It is made with various different devices and can be made large or small. Through the goniotomy, we place a catheter this particular device has an LED light at the tip of it, which shows the catheter as it runs along the entire course of Schlem's canal. This is, of course, sped up a little bit. You can see the red blinking tip as we reach the end of our 360 course. After I complete the 360 course of Schlem's canal, I then reverse course and start pulling the catheter out with small jerking movements because there's a tight fit between the catheter and the canal and these small movements allow me to move it more easily along the canal wall. 
as the catheter is being removed, it is simultaneously injecting a small amount of jelly called viscoelastic, and this stretches open Schlem's canal, increasing its capacity. This procedure is called a viscocanaloplasty. The next step is to place a stent. Stents come in different sizes and shapes based upon the manufacturer, and I use each of them depending on the patient's glaucoma and the glaucoma severity. In this example, I am using a 6 mm stent, which is introduced through the goniotomy into Schlem's canal. After the viscocanaloplasty, or stretching open of Schlem's canal, this stent inserts very easily. The success rate in achieving a pressure approximately 35% less than when we started is about 85%. So let me repeat that. 85% of people will achieve a pressure 35% lower than when we started. Most, but not all, patients will be free of glaucoma drops after these procedures. As with many diseases, some patients will require further intervention if their glaucoma worsens or as they age. That further intervention was discussed in the glaucoma treatments video I did, and I will discuss it more in depth in further videos. As always, thanks for watching, and feel free to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Mm -hmm.